right, so we'll get started shortly. Um, welcome, if you're jumping on for our functional movement webinar today. We've got a couple of minutes before we'll actually get going and get started. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, I will take some questions and comments in the chat. So we'll do that after um, after our session. That way I can not have to multitask too much, stay on track and stay focused. But I hope everybody's having a good week. It's already Tuesday <laughs> and we have, what, two weeks until classes start back? Uh, yeah, two weeks. So I know that everybody's probably busy getting their getting your things together for the semester. So hopefully this little webinar today will give you a little break um, from your daily task or whatever that may be. So get comfortable, make sure you've got um, some water, something to drink around. You're ready to roll in the next minute or so. So it is two o'clock, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Whitney and I am the fitness services manager at the University of Alabama Student Recreation Center. And I've had the privilege of working with the Office of Health Promotion and Wellness for a while now, um, creating programs and collaborating. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So a little bit about myself. I actually work with Charles and Dee um, and Kristen over at the Rec Center and we, are the ones responsible for personal training and um, fitness assessments and group exercise classes and Pilates reformer and all those things. Our team is pretty hardworking, so um, that's what we do. So the rec center is open now. We do have very limited hours um, from nine to three right now every day, but we're hoping to get um, some new hours coming up pretty soon in the next uh, few weeks so that you guys can um, have some more variety of times to come in. So I know a lot of people have questions about group exercise and what that's gonna look like in the future. And I'm happy to say we are gonna continue to offer virtual classes um, through our social media platforms. Um, and then we are also going to offer in-person classes starting in September. So we'll have more information about that as we move forward, because um, I know some people like to hear that. Um, my background is in fitness. So I went to the University of Alabama and got my undergrad in exercise and sports science, um, taught all kinds of different classes. Um, I'm a Pilates reformer instructor, yoga instructor, uh, personal trainer, so I've kind of done it all. Uh, and I enjoy what I do. And so the topic today is functional movement. Um, this is kind of, I feel like a buzzword for uh, most of us. The fitness industry, they are funny and they love to take these buzzwords and things and um, kind of capitalize on them. And so functional movement is one of those. It's nothing new. It's something that as fitness professionals and per personal trainers uh, and instructors, we've been doing this since we started um, the business. So we'll get into what functional movement is. So sit back and relax and here we go. So functional movement is training your muscles to work together to complete daily tasks in an efficient way. So we'll talk about examples of what that is, um, how that relates to what we do um, in our jobs, at home. It, it's, it's everywhere. Now we, we can't get away from functionally moving. We can't get away from moving, nor should we ever get away from moving because it is very important for a lot of reasons. When I was thinking about this presentation and just kind of throwing around functional and movement and just words and just kind of thinking about what they mean, we know what moving is, but when we look at the definition of functional, which has kind of a little funny part to it, I think, um, first definition is having a special activity purpose or task relating to the way in which something works. So if we think about our daily lives, we do certain movements over time, um, and that's how we operate. That's how our bodies move. The second definition I thought was perfect for the fitness industry, um, functional, so it designed to be practical and useful rather than attractive, <laughs> which I thought was funny because in fitness, I feel like we always think about being attractive because 
people are working out to you know look better and feel better um, but I want us to take a step away from that um, and think of it more as practical so whatever our uh, you know, thoughts are towards fitness, whether we like it, don't like it. I'm in the fitness industry and I can sometimes have a very negative feeling towards it based on what is put out there. Um, but let's try to think positively. And so let's think about our own mindsets, um, our own bodies, because we're all made very um, individually. And I think that that's important um, to remember as we move forward. So functional, preparing yourself for a specific activity. Um, and that leads me to kind of your everyday movements. So I picked a few pictures that I thought kind of uh, encompass all the movements or sort of some of the movements that we do, whether it's working outside, um, inside cleaning, just having quality of life with our kids, our grandkids. We do certain movements in our life over and over and that can kind of create imbalances. And so we'll kind of talk about what that looks like. But in the end, we all just want to feel good. Nobody's getting younger, unfortunately. <laughs> and we all just want to feel really good um, every day, whatever the task may be. Uh, we know that physical activity helps to prevent um, the onset of diseases and illnesses. I think um, during this time of COVID, I told myself I wouldn't even bring it up so we could have some normalcy, but that is the normalcy now. Um, COVID is an illness that we're all kind of a little scared of. Um, and I think that by doing these functional movements and being healthy, physically healthy and eating the right things, um, it definitely helps to decrease those risks. Maybe not the risk of getting it, but maybe overcoming that. So when we think of um, heart disease, diabetes, um, the things that you get screened for um, in your screenings uh, this year, uh, we think about how we can feel better in our lives and that comes down to the physical activity and movement that we should be doing. So some of these pictures may resonate with you if you're a gardener, if you do yard work, if you have kids, if you clean. I feel like we all kind of have something that um, uh, connects us to these movements. So when we think about everyday movements and we relate that to fitness, I've just jotted down some things that when I think of exercises to prepare us for daily activity, this is what comes to mind. Um, so a lunge, <laughs> a lot of people don't like lunges. Lunges can provide um, pain for people in their knees, their hips, depending on some underlying issues. But I want us to think about these exercises, specifically a lunge and a squat, in a way uh, that you would do every single day. So if you think about fitness lunges, it's a very specific lunge. The girl in the picture here, she has great form. Her knee is back over her uh, over her ankle. It's not going over the toe. Um, her back leg is in a good position. She looks good. Not all of us are going to have that same form. So rather than thinking about having that form, we can think about things that we do every single day that mimic that lunge position. So for example, you're cleaning around your house and your kid or your dog leaves um, toys or something and you have to reach down to pick them up so you step forward to pick them up um, rather than using our backs we are using our legs larger muscle groups that can carry a load or can protect us um, so we do a lunge position it's the same thing with a squat um, we all squat every day uh, some of us have a different look to our squats uh, when we sit down in a chair and when we stand back up if we're doing it the right way, we're, we're doing a squat. Um, when we go to the bathroom, yep, I said it, that's a squat. And so we wanna be able to sit down and stand back up. Um, those are two of the major leg and lower body exercises that I would focus on for functional movement. And like I said, everybody's gonna look different. So her lunge in this picture, she's doing a really great job. She has a perfect lunge in my opinion. Um, that may not mean your lunge looks like that. And so we'll talk a little bit later about assessing um, ourselves, our muscle imbalances and doing a functional movement assessment um, and what that kind of looks like. So legs are always gonna be lunges or squats in some variation or another. It's that hip hinge and knee bend of the lower body. Um, twisting, so Twisting gets us in trouble a lot, right? So when we're twisting to reach into the back seat and we catch our back or we look really quickly, 
and we catch our back. I always think of that episode of the Brady Bunch where they're in the courtroom and the guy's got the brace on his neck and I think Mr. Brady throws the binder and he quickly moves his head. I don't know why I always think about that with getting hurt and twisting. If you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but twisting is a very important uh, movement of the body. It is the movement of the, the rib cage around the spine and the muscles that are involved with that help with our posture. They also help with our breathing. So if we aren't conditioned to twist efficiently, um, whether it means strength, flexibility, range of motion, um, we can definitely get hurt. And I think myself included have done something before with a quick twist and have pulled something in the lower back. So twisting is a, a, a version of functional movement that we should be doing every day whether it's with a weight or just range of motion um, to prepare the body for those types of activities. So then we have our push and pull. So if you look at the fella up here with his hands against the wall, um, he's doing a wall push up. Um, pushing is gonna be anything that is your plank because you're in that push up position. Um, push ups obviously. Uh, if you're doing yard work and you're pushing something away from you, you're using the pec major and minor um, you're also using the triceps as your sisters to push that object away from you. Um, push up is a great example. Uh, it can be done so many different ways. So if you have somebody that's been working out their entire lives, sure, they can jump on the floor, do a regular full plank push up. But some of my clients that I work with that maybe um, have a, a shoulder issue or uh, they haven't done a push up in a while, um, I would take them over to the wall or decrease their range of motion, maybe against a bar, something to bring them up a little bit more. So a pushing, pushing motion. So we do that a lot. We push things close. Um, the next one is a pull, which is just the opposing uh, activity to the push. You pull. Um, I think of a, a dance, like you push and pull, which if you dance, you know what I'm talking about. But if you pull something, it's going to be using the, the muscles in the back, okay? So the back side of the body. Um, and it's also going to be using the biceps. So pulling, when you when that elbow bends, you pull in. So I can think of a lot of different things when you're pulling. Um, uh, if you're outside and you're pulling weeds, if you are, I think the lady in the slide uh, before us, she, no, she was pushing forget that one, but you could be pulling something. Um, thinking about those opposing muscle groups. And what's really cool is if you ever go to the rec center or a weight room, typically the way they have the machines uh, set up, not the free weights, but the actual weight machines are gonna be um, in a certain order. Most of the time it's going to be upper body is in a row, your push pull, it kind of continues to flow and then your legs. Um, and I will say this, I was going to plug the rec center at the end, but I'll go ahead and talk about it now. We do have some new equipment and the way it's positioned out six feet apart, I will say. Uh, it, it, it's very, very helpful um, so that if you just go through the line of the machines, you will hit all of these major muscle groups and you will do every single one of these um, exercises for functional movement. Uh, so keep that in mind if, if that's something that's kind of new to you and you're not really sure. Um, the last two, a hip hinge. This is something that goes hand in hand with the lunge and the squat. So when we hip hinge, we keep a flat back and we hinge forward in the hips. There's no rounding in the spine, okay? If there were rounding in the spine, that would be spinal flexion, and we don't want to do any um, non-supported spinal flexion for most populations because of bulging discs pulling a muscle in the back. It's just really not safe. So a hip hinge is um, a lot of core strength, but it's also keeping the knees slightly bent um, and moving straight from the hip joint rather than rounding the spine. So for instance, if you think about, I don't know, just somebody just random picking up something from the ground, a lot of times if they don't have those biomechanics, they're going to bend forward. And that is a terrible way uh, to move and it's not functional at all because it's doing more harm than good. So a hip hinge is better for the body. It does take some thought and it does take um, some awareness as well. And then walking. Uh, walking is a great way to keep all of these muscle groups um, engaged and moving. We don't think about it, but when we walk, there's a little element of twist to the upper body, especially if you add your arms, um, but you're still strengthening the legs, you're still moving through the hips and the shoulders. So walking is functional. 
Uh, I put walking on here rather than running because most of us would walk. <laughs> I don't even, I don't like to run unless I'm being chased. So those are all the um, exercises and movements you can think of to prepare your body for your daily tasks, for things that you're doing at work, at home, what have you. So as a fitness professional, we kind of look at things differently. So let me slide myself down a little bit. So when we look at the human body and when we are designing a workout for somebody, there are three planes that we have our participants or have our, have our clients move in very typically we always move in the same plane okay which is forward and backwards right we walk we i mean actually i'm not even going to say walking backwards because nobody walks backwards we always turn around and walk so always walking forward that forward movement but we have um, a plane that you know moving to the sides and also twisting so when you start to think about if you're currently doing a workout okay i'm speaking to you guys right now that are actively doing a workout and taking time to go to the gym do something in your garage at home whatever do a little self-assessment and ask yourself are you uh moving forward and backwards side to side and twisting okay twisting can be from the torso it can be from the hips it's still going to be a twist Okay, so do your own little self-evaluation. If you aren't currently doing an exercise program, we'll get to that in just a second um, of how to get started with that and what to do. So keep this in mind because so many times I have seen people only work in such a linear way um, that they're avoiding all these other muscle groups um, and they're not being cognizant of the different ways that the body moves. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a visual. Um, if you really like this kind of stuff, if you like learning about the human body, joint actions, it can go very, very, very in depth because the body is so deep with layers of muscles. Um, there's a guy on YouTube that I really like to watch. His name is Sam Weber and he's over in the UK and he is, um, I think he's an exercise physiologist, but he's also a physical therapist and he will break down certain muscle groups, joint actions. So it's really cool. I mean, I'm definitely a nerd when it comes to that kind of stuff. You may not be. You may just like listening to a webinar and that's completely fine. But if you do like it, check him out because he's got a lot of really, really good information. So cool. We're going to move forward, backwards, side to side, and we're going to twist. So we're going to be very aware of how we're moving. All right. So just a quick little breakdown. When we think about functional movement and moving in those different planes, we have so many different things going on within the body. We know we all have bones, otherwise we'd be a big old blob of tendons and whatnot if we didn't have bones. Although I think our fascia would keep us in a somewhat of a figure or position. But our bones are providing the framework for pulleys and levies. Levies? Nope, that was a restaurant. And unfortunately it closed down because I liked it. Levers, <laughs> pulleys and levers um, so that we can move through our joints, so that we can strengthen our muscles. And then we have our joints. Range of motion, if you've ever heard that term, ROM, we actually have a class that we do um, to increase our range of motion. That's specifically talking about the joints, your shoulder joints, your range of motion through the shoulder joint, um, knee, hip, we got the idea of our joints. Our muscles are gonna be responsible for strength, opposing movement, posture. They're very elastic and adaptable um, and they grow in repair. So when you start working out and you get that soreness or you get that delayed onset muscle soreness, which happens sometimes a couple of days later, um, that is your muscles mending stronger back together. So you get little tears in your muscles and then they're repairing themselves back together. And then our tendons and our ligaments are the connective tissue. So your tendons are gonna be um, the connective tissue from to uh, muscles to bone and the ligaments are bone to bone. Um, all that being said, physical activity in general and our functional movement in general strengthens all these things in one way or another. So joints is gonna create that lubrication um, range of movement so that we can be more efficient in our strength training. Um, just a side note, if you are doing strength training and that's all you do, start to put in some mobility exercises. So mobility exercises are, um, you're not actually lifting a weight, you're just going through the movement, working on the flexibility of um, uh, the muscle and range of motion of the joint and see if that helps you. So classes like yoga, even Pilates, um, 
those types of activities are going to increase your strength because you're getting more range of motion. So kind of cross training a little bit. Um, just a little plug there. So let's talk about an assessment um, and why you may need a functional movement assessment. Now, I would recommend uh, getting with a personal trainer to do this. Even if you are with a friend, <laughs> they may be able to help you assess some of your movement, but to be honest with you, you need a trained eye. So people like myself, um, Charles, our personal trainers at the rec center, we are trained to, when someone walks in, to look at their, um, their gait, the walk that they have, um, to look at their feet, um, hip, hips, shoulders, and it helps us to decide where they need to start in their exercise program. So I just jotted down a few little things to think about. Um, functional movement, movement assessment, um, there's, there's different ones out there. A, a lot of the same movements that I mentioned earlier with squat, lunges, things like that to see um, if you have any imbalances. So when we do these um, functional movement assessments, we are looking for imbalances within the body. We're not trying to point fingers and say, oh my goodness, you have a bad hip. That's not what we're doing. We're trying to figure out the best course of action so that you can get the most for your money and then you can also um, reach your goals that you've stated in your paperwork with us. So it helps us to create a plan we are always going to start with a baseline. It doesn't matter if you are wanting to lose weight, which is our probably the first request that we get from people. It doesn't matter if you're trying to lose weight. Um, if you are trying to get stronger, if your doctor has sent you to us, we are going to look at how you move. That's it, period. It is very unhealthy for you as a client and really kind of selfish on our part for us to just meet with you throw some weights in your hands and say, all right, you're going to do this. Um, that leads to injury and we're not trying to injure anybody, right? We're trying to prevent injury. So we create a plan. We look at your movement pattern. So over time, when you come in to meet with us, we're going to assess your movement and then we're going to reevaluate it again, you know, a month later how, or whatever your trainer's plan is for you. So we assess your movement patterns. Um, it helps to provide awareness as well. Um, when you start to take yoga and Pilates, those types of classes, the mind-body classes, and all that means is you're connecting mentally what you're doing physically. You're not just going through the motions. You're completely aware and all in, in that present moment. Um, when you provide awareness, you move better. You are more efficient with your movement. Um, you can actually do less because you are completely focused on what you're doing. And so when we do functional movement assessments or screenings, we're trying to help the client understand, you know, why maybe they're moving this way. It's also an educational component. Um, so, you know, just kind of starting to think about yourself if you're in line at Target because they have one register open or wherever. Um, if you're standing in line and you have a tendency, for example, to kind of kick your hip over to the side and place all your weight in one leg, do a little assessment when you're standing or waiting. That's one of the best times to do it because what else are you going to have to do besides play on your phone? And we know that's not good for our posture anyway, but do a little assessment, stand tall with your feet connected to the floor and just notice if you feel one side of your body bearing the load more than the other, how your feet feel, how your hips feel, and just do your own little mental assessment. But like I said, you really do need to have somebody to physically look at you and how you move. Um, I, I have been teaching for a long time now and it never fails. Every time I go to a training or some type of continuing education um, course and I have another professional look at me, they will immediately tell me where, where I'm kicking my weight or where my imbalance is. And it's really nice to kind of check back in, even for someone like me that I do this all the time to think, oh yeah, I have an imbalance. I need to remember to adjust that. So providing awareness is, is, um, is very important. Um, you should always <laughs> have a functional movement assessment before you start an exercise program. Uh, if you are brand new coming into us, well, guess what? You probably won't pick up a weight for a few weeks because we want to make sure you're moving correctly because again, we don't want you, um, causing any injuries. I feel like my internet's lagging just a little bit. So y'all hang tight. Um, we'll assess your range of motion and we'll also assess your posture and your alignment. And like I said, 
uh, it needs to be done by a fitness professional because they have that trained eye. I give myself a second to catch up. Don't y'all love working remotely where you have to rely on the internet and it just gets slower and slower the more you use? That's my rant. All right, so let's talk a little bit about compound exercises. So some of you are gonna be like, oh yeah, I do those all the time. Some of you are like, I've never heard of a compound exercise. Um, this is taking two movements and combining them into one. So an easy way, easy example would be a squat and as you stand, a bicep curl. Um, and what compound exercises do, um, they help to provide balance. So you're working on your balance, stability for those joints, those stable joints. Um, it's multi-plane. So if you go back to our lady that was standing with the three planes, um, we need to be working through different planes. So if I'm squatting, I'm working in one plane. If I'm reaching out, I'm working in another. If I add a twist, um, it's not ideal for everybody. And I don't usually recommend compound exercises unless uh, you've been doing some of these things for a while. Um, again, we don't want to cause any injury. It also helps with cognitive development because it's, it's choreography, right? You're having to think about two movements at once. You're having to balance. You're having to breathe. Um, so it helps us to stay on track and focus. Um, we involve as many muscle groups as possible, as many joints, because number one, it is challenging. The body does like a challenge to be able to grow stronger. Um, I hate throwing this around, but I thought maybe I could get more people to do compound exercises if I put the word, the words calorie burn in here. And I don't mean that as, oh, if you do all these really hard exercises, you're just going to shred. That's not what I mean at all. I mean that it takes more calories to do compound exercises, therefore less time. You're working more efficiently with your time. So if you have 10 minutes between meetings, you're doing Zoom meetings and you're like, I've got to get up and do something. I've got my weights over here. I could do a compound exercise. I could do three compound exercises and I've done my workout for the day. So calorie burn is not meant to be a buzzword of let's sign up for the rec center and calorie burn away. It's just meant for you to think more efficiently um, and take less time because we all know that time is an issue. So compound exercises, Try to put those in. You can Google them, YouTube. Internet is a really, really great thing. All right, so let's talk about the FIT principle um, and what this looks like. So functional movement, in my opinion, those types of exercises should be done three to four days a week. Um, remember, this isn't just picking up weights and um, doing your workout. It's it's doing things so that you can have more of an efficient workout. Um, but either way, whatever you choose to do, whether it's strength training, cardio, your functional movement, the FIT principle is really cool to give us an idea of what and how, when we should be doing it. So the F in FIT is the frequency, how often you do it. If you go on the CDC's website or ACSM, um, any of the big websites that we refer to, um, for cardio, they're going to require three to five days a week of cardiorespiratory endurance, strength training, two to three days, giving yourself rest in between. For functional movement, because we're working more on posture and alignment, there's no weight involved at this point. You could do it every day because with flexibility, that's kind of what I like to think about with flexibility, um, you can stretch every day. Okay. Now I'm not saying do yoga every single day. It depends on the type of yoga. There's lots of different, um, versions or flavors of yoga. You could do a gentle yoga one day, um, a more power yoga the next day. So in reality, you're just listening to your body with the guidelines we're giving you. The intensity, uh, it kind of depends if, again, if this is cardio, if you pop over to the CDC's website, ACSM, um, they're going to give you uh, a percentage of your heart rate or of your max heart rate. That way you can have an idea of uh, how intense you should be working. Um, for strength training, you, would, you want the last one or two reps that you do. So you have sets of reps. You want the last one or two that you do 
to be tough. You don't want it to be so hard you lose your form, you, you can't even get the weight up or pushed up or whatever, but you do wanna feel the work, okay? And so I, had a, I have a lot of people ask me, well, how do I know if I'm like, training like hard enough? And that's really honestly, unless you have a trainer, you really have to think about your own self and how you feel. And if you think about maintaining good proper form and alignment, um, and you can complete the exercise, uh, then you're good to go. Time strength training is going to depend on basically just whenever you finish doing those exercises, you get a little bit more into specifics when it comes to cardio. 30 minutes a day of physical activity decreases the risk of diseases. Um, but for weight loss and cardio respiratory endurance, um, you're going to go a little bit longer. Um, and again, intensity is going to factor into that as well. So, you know, I encourage you guys, if you, if you don't have a trainer, if you don't have someone that holds you accountable to do your own research with the fit principle to map out your week and think about, okay, from, you know, let's say just Monday to Friday, a work week, how you're going to arrange your time to do certain things. Um, because it may look different for everybody. And then the type is just, what are you going to do for that activity? If it's cardio, are you walking and working on functional movement and moving efficiently or running? Um, are you getting on the elliptical? Are you swimming? So there's lots of different modes. So this is new. Think about that. Do your own research, because um, I think it has to be something that you enjoy and you like to an extent. Otherwise, you just may not do it. That's how I feel about it. So for me, the room I'm in right now actually is at my house. This is my like little yoga studio and my tap shoes because I tap sometimes. But um, I am a yoga instructor. So I wanted to create a space. I had extra room. I wanted to create a space so I could come in and do um, my physical activity, dance or whatever. And I think that's also very important um, if you don't have access to a gym right now, if the hours work, finding your space that you can do that. Um, yeah, my internet's very laggy. Sorry about that. We'll give it a second. <laughs> All right. So fit principle, look that up, get some more information about it. So we know that functional movement is just how we should be moving. Um, we know the types of movements that we do. So you have to kind of look at yourself and your, your day and what that is for you. So for example, for me, even though I'm in the fitness world, I have been working remotely and I have been sitting a lot more. So I've been having to think about exercises and things that I need to do to keep things lubricated and moving my joints, things like that. Um, if you are someone that works with logistics on campus, if you work grounds, you're going to be doing these types of movements all the time. And so your version is going to look a little bit different because you do these types of movements all the time, probably on one side you're going to need to um, balance it out with other exercises and other stretches. Um, it, you know, if you're somebody that is constantly getting up and down, you know, you've got a lot of joint pain in your knees, you would need a fitness professional to help assess some stretches and things to get you um, some relief in those areas because we do have overuse. Um, the next webinar that I'm doing is going to be how to get started with all of this um, and just some quick little easy steps and some mentality of how to get going because I mean to be honest it's more of a mental game you can be told all day long what you need to do I've told you I've given you websites you have the information it's getting out there and doing it and I understand that I I've worked with many people that they come to us for services because they need accountability and they just need a kick in the pants, really. So um, that'll be the next webinar that I do on September 14th. Um, if you have specific things that you want to know that I could cover in the webinar, I won't talk about prescription of exercise. I will give you guidelines because prescription is is one on one. That's very um, that's just you and your trainer, and so I can't really go into that. But if you think of some things and you want to email me or put in the chat, um, I'll give you my, my contact information after this. Um, I told you I'd plug the rec center. I can't not plug the rec center, but I want you guys to know, I, you can go anywhere you want, or 
exercise anywhere you want. My goal when I do these presentations is just to get you thinking about it and to get you moving. I would love for you to come to the rec center because I'm there <laughs> and my team's there and we love to get people um, in our doors and in our classes as much as possible. But we are doing personal training at the rec center. Right now it looks a little different because we are only doing single and partner sessions and that's the same for our Pilates reformer. Um, we do offer group sessions and Pilates reformer classes, but because of the pandemic right now, we are work still working on a plan to get our groups in. Um, so just hang tight. But I would love to do a free session on the reformer with you. We could do your movement assessment if you're just curious. Um, it is 30 minutes for free. You just shoot me an email. Um, if you and a friend want to do it, I can take two people at one time and we can get that set up. So just think about it. If you have no clue what a Pilates Reformer is, Google it. It's pretty cool. And um, we have a whole studio at the Rec Center. We also offer consultations and we would be willing to do a virtual consultation with you if you are not okay with coming into the Rec Center. I will say our facility has never looked better. <laughs> to be honest with you, our new equipment is beautiful. Um, our custodial staff is amazing. Uh, keeping that place clean and the student workers, they have just done a really phenomenal job. Um, so if you've never been in the rec center, I'd love to give you a tour and we can just walk around just to see if you would feel comfortable doing that. Uh, the bod pod, I didn't talk about this in the presentation only because um, I wanted to focus more on the movement side of things rather than body composition. But we do have a bod pod, we keep it cleaned, we have a very um, uh, sanitized way of doing everything. It is gonna give you a baseline of your body composition so that if you are trying to gain muscle and lose weight, um, you have real numbers to go off of. So we are more than willing to set that up with you. I believe it's $30 for um, that bod pod test. Um, but I think it's well worth it, especially if you need some numbers to look at, because sometimes the scales aren't what we need to see. Sometimes we need to see the actual composition of our body changing rather than the bathroom scales. I'd throw them all away if I could. Um, I already mentioned that we have new equipment, so come check it out. I'm still kind of learning it myself. So if you see me around, shoot, we can learn it together. Uh, we, we can figure it out together. Um, and I do want to, you know, let you guys know that we do have live classes that we put on our Instagram page, on our story, um, and we do have Facebook, and we have videos on YouTube. I don't know if some of you guys have looked, uh, have looked at them, but now that our staff is coming back, and it's not just me doing them all the time, and you get a little bit more variety, um, we're gonna have cardio and strength, and we're working really hard to have that virtual option, because we know it's uncomfortable for people to come in. And it's kind of the best time to try some of this stuff if you can do it in the comfort of your own home, close the door, no one watches you, give it a shot. Um, our handle is UA Recreation. So if you go to Instagram, UA Recreation and Facebook, um, we are going to be moving forward to more live classes on YouTube starting um, when school starts. So you can actually go on YouTube and do um, some live classes. Uh, we are going to have in-person classes this fall, and I will give you guys a quick little disclaimer, and y'all are kind of the first to know. Hope I don't get in trouble. Um, we are going to start in September, and so if you are a member at the Rec Center, you will be getting a email for some things. We will have a new online registration process, so you do not have to grab a pass. Everything will be digital. Um, we will have to limit the amount of people that can be in the studio, of course, but we're still trying to get everybody in there safely and comfortably. Um, so we're excited. It's going to look a lot different for us, but I think that sometimes with change, it's good and we just look for the best. Um, I do want to share my contact info before I take questions from you guys and kind of wrap this up. Um, I am very willing to do a Zoom meeting with your department um, to come in whenever we can come in. Uh, and talk about any type of topic. I can talk about this same topic. I have other ones. My specialty is going to be more movement, yoga, and Pilates. I can even come do a class for you, a virtual class. Just let me know um, because that's something that I enjoy doing um, and I want to be available to everybody. So I'll let you guys take my info down. Um, you can look me up on the 
uh, website as well. So I'm going to get out of my presentation and hopefully I can do this right because I've got my split screen going on and who knows, I could totally mess it up. Uh, okay, so if anybody has any questions, I will look at the chat if you would like to ask anything specifically. Um, if you don't have a question and that you want to put in the chat, you want to do just an email, that's fine. But I just want to encourage everybody, if you take anything from this, I want you to think about how you move in general and what you can do to bring a little bit more balance and awareness to that. Um, maybe catch a buddy or um, an account accountability partner and have, have them watch you walk and maybe have um, you watch them and kind of think about maybe where their imbalances are. Again, I know you're not fitness professionals, but it's something to be aware of and to think of. Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, feel free about anything, be fitness, wellness, um, the rec center, I will be more than happy to answer those and be available. Um, so with osteopenia, you definitely need to avoid some flexion movements of the spine. So we have a question about that if y'all wanna look in the chat. Um, this is right before osteoporosis. And so you should be doing some strength training. You should be working the large muscle group. So my recommendation is to go into the weight room, jump on a press machine, pull machine, get those large muscle groups to start working, do walking, do weight bearing exercises so that you can bring strength to that, um, strength to the bone. Um, I would avoid any flexion of the spine with twisting, Russian twist. You don't need to do those. So anything that you're, I don't know if y'all can kind of see me, but a rounded position and you're twisting like this, you don't do that when you um, are on the verge of osteoporosis because you could break a vertebrae and you don't want to do that. You can do things with a flat back. So you could do a twist up here, holding the core in if you like that type of core work. Um, but yeah, strength training, super important. Important for all of us, but especially those of us um, that need to be working on bone health and bone strength. Yeah, that was actually a really great question. Really great, great question. Any more questions on this lovely Tuesday? <clears throat> well, I have definitely enjoyed being on here. I wish I could see everybody's faces instead of just my own, but maybe um, I'll get to come speak with you at your um, your work, do a Zoom with your, your other employees and your uh, department. I would love to do that. So I'm going to sign off and I want to wish everyone a wonderful Tuesday. Get out there and move, be active, and I guess I'll see you all later. Thanks for joining. Bye.